Yes. There you go. Thank you, Jessica, for helping me figure that out this morning. Okie dokie. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope the weather is beautiful where you are. We have a gorgeous, gorgeous day here in Ottawa. I am in, uh, my name is Julie, and I'm in Ottawa, um, Ontario, Canada, in case you don't know where that is. I am a singer, and um, I've been in, these, in this industry, which I absolutely love, for 12 years. I'm just gonna do something here. So um, here's why I love this industry. Um, because anybody can do it. We're all on a level playing field. We have support, love, community, kind people, givers. We have this incredible culture in this company with a high impact product that's truly making a difference in people's lives. It's simple, it's effective, and the whole world needs this right now. Okay, so I'm going to get right into this this morning. Um, and this morning today is going to be very much about mindset. And I believe that this is the most important thing. So if we can get that straight, then the rest of it is just the technical, easy to learn stuff. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about mindset. So what is your why? Having a clear why will help you get to where you want to go. One of mine is to pay off debt and allow my husband the opportunity to retire should he wish to do so. Now, I don't usually talk about myself, but I need you to understand why I think the way that I do and why I do the things the way that I do um, and how I can reach out to people with genuineness, sincerity, not thinking about the outcome or being attached to it in any way. And I'm hoping that what I share here can help some of you um, in the same way. So my husband and I met at work in the high tech industry. He took a risk many years ago. He left a very reputable high tech company when everyone thought that he was crazy and started his own, started his own company in the baby room of our first home with an idea and hope and a responsibility to provide for our family. When we work for someone else, we are in charge of our own destiny, right? Our own lives. We're at the helm. We're not at the helm of our boat. So he found that he was traveling a lot and I had a fear of flying. And I think it's because of my dad. He was afraid to fly and I was terrified. And I was an absolute mess every time that he had to leave town. And we'd find out on Friday, that he had to leave on Sunday for the week and it would just ruin the whole weekend. It was awful for both of us because he was, he was upset because he knew I was gonna be upset. And I believe that this is a very big part of why he left. So fast forward a couple of years, we were happy living our lives in an over 100 year old mice infested two room stone home on a large country property. We were putting diapers on credit cards, but we were happy. Keep in mind that I wasn't the breadwinner and I didn't feel the woes of our finances. I was the baby maker. And we both felt that I had the most important job. He was financially struggling at work and we didn't know what was gonna happen. So not long afterwards, during the high tech boom, there was talk of a company interested in possibly buying his company, but honestly, it could have gone either way. So I would lay in bed at night and I'd think about, what if this came to fruition? You know, could this really happen? What would we do with this money? Who could we give it to? That made me excited. I never once thought about us and the kids. And I, I'll never forget that day. It was actually frightening. You see, as much as we were struggling financially, I couldn't have been happier. 
I was afraid of the unknown. What could this do to us? How would it affect us? Would we change? Because we were happy. And I'm so happy to say that we didn't change. And I remember buying champagne that day and I was never so excited to have been able to go out and pre-order these platters of food because my mom and dad came over and they were so proud. You couldn't wipe the smile from their faces. It was announced on the radio um, while they were over and one of his employees soon drove into our driveway with a hot new sports car that he had purchased. That made me happy. We gave to our parents, to our siblings, to our close friends. I was able to take my sister out and do the pretty woman thing and let her buy any clothes that she wanted that she liked on that day. We paid off all of my brother's debt and we were able to give to our favorite charities like the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. That made me happy. So all of those things made me happy, but it wasn't about the things that I could now buy. And I did buy some things, thinking that that was the obvious thing to do. But here's what happened. I didn't really like those things. They didn't make me feel good. As a matter of fact, I felt like people would think that I was better than them, and I'm not. You see, I treat people the same. I treat the janitor like I treat the, the principal of the school. So there's a reason why there's so many memes out there saying money doesn't make you happy. It's true, but it can make things comfortable and easier. And it's okay to want it and to do and to get the things that make you happy and excited. So that being said here, my goal in this company is very big. And I'm not just going to have an impact on people from using the product or helping them earn income. I'm going to be doing a lot of good in the world. Two years from now, I'm going to be going to a random grocery store parking lot and giving a car away. The universe once gave me a car and I'm gonna give it back in the same way as a surprise. Now this leads me to this, thank you. This means, leads me to this, your mind and the universe are one in the same. So what you think about, you bring about. I made that car happen. So be very, very careful about your thoughts and your words. Like I won't write negative words anywhere. So on Facebook a little while ago, I was writing something, I was sharing something that I had killed my plants, but I actually couldn't even bring myself to write that, those words. So I decided to say something like that I had a brown thumb. If you think about bills, you're gonna get more bills. If you tend to think on the negative side, please get some help, some personal development. There's an incredible app that I love, love, love. It's called Blinkist, and I can type it in here later. Blinkist is an excellent app, and what they do is they have books, and they condense those books, any book, like any famous book, and they condense it into 15 minutes so that you can listen to it anytime, anywhere, to anything, okay? Because if, if you start changing what you think, if you don't start changing what you think, you're gonna attract more negativity into your life. And it's gonna have a snowball effect. And it's different, it, it's difficult to work with people like this. And the reason why is um, we tend to match energies. So if, if you're positive, your energy is up here. And if you're negative, your energy is down here. And, and basically, it's, um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so, so first of all, let me, let, me, let me back up a little bit. <clears throat> so we tend to match energy. So if a person is sad and depressed and in a bad place, you know, we're, we're not going to be all bubbly and happy and, 
and about that, right? Obviously, you want to match your energy. But if, if you've got a negative person, your energy's up here and theirs is down here. And what happens is it's, it's like a heavy force and it pulls you down. It pulls you down that negative energy and it makes it twice as hard to go back up. So it's difficult. So there's most definitely help out there. Um, I love Blinkist. So when I was younger, here's another thing you can do. When I was younger, I used to be a bit of a hypochondriac, okay? And when those worrisome thoughts would come and they came off it, I would just learn to say no, like a resounding no. And guess what happens? Soon enough, those thoughts stop coming. And it doesn't matter if it's fear or worry or negativity or anything that isn't desirable and isn't going to help you reach your goals, okay? I don't call them dreams. I call them goals because dreams to me are just that. They're dreams. They're not real. You know, there's something that you hopefully will get to one day. So I call them goals. And here's what I say. I say, I'm going to do this. And I know it with every cell in my body. Okay. So now I want to talk about vision. So there's a saying out there that not everyone who can see has vision. So what do you want? Whatever you want, I want you to see it and I want you to feel it. So I'll give you an example. So I'm assuming that you guys, a lot of you know Ray, who Ray Higdon is. So Ray and I were friends in a previous company. It was actually the last company that he was in before he went out onto his own and did rank makers and, and all those great things. And he was naturally our top income earner. And often Ray was asked to present. So we'd be in this big stadium and Ray would be standing up against the wall. And guess who was standing up against the wall with Ray? Me. <laughs> Me, because as soon as Ray went up down that aisle to go up on stage, I would take his place. And I would pretend that I was the next one to get up there. Because for me, that's what I want to do. I want to inspire. So guys, I know where I'm going. The question is, who's coming with me? I can clearly see it as clear as, as day. Okay, I've already gone, this, gone over the speech in my head over and over and over, like it's already happened. Sometimes I forget that it actually hasn't happened. And I see you guys there, the once depressed, the single moms in tears of happiness. So here is my real why, okay? So this is a story of someone in our group. She felt unimportant. She was exhausted. She was the master at fake smiles. She was that girl that always said she was fine. She couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel of her circumstances and busy life. But here's what happened. A friend shared a magical cup of coffee with her and now, she laughs all the time. She enjoys life. She feels good on the inside. She is improving on the outside. She is regaining her confidence. She feels years younger. She easily sees the fun in her every day. She is focused and determined and she gets to share her experience in the hope of helping others transform like her. This is my why. I'm on a mission. And I'm willing to help everyone, but I am super passionate about helping teenagers, youth with anxiety and depression, and single moms that need to earn income. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to help the abused women, the alcoholics. Heck, I'll even help the most perfect mind with the most perfect body because for them, it's fun. I'm going to do everything possible. I'm going to devote all of my time to making this happen. It's my purpose. It makes me feel good. And I need to be able to say that I've made a difference. I've changed lives, that I've saved lives. 
So you know what? This isn't actually going to take much longer. I just want to leave you guys. What time is it? Wow, I didn't think it would go so fast. Um, I want to leave you guys oh, with some homework. So I want to share some things that can help you get to where you want to go in regards to your mind and putting things out to the universe. Okay, so write down your why. It doesn't have to be right now, but, um, and I want you to think deep, like what is your purpose? Why are you doing this? And I, I want it to get bigger, like a, a, a more fulfilling why. Because if you focus on that, the rest will come. You don't have to give it any more thought. I also want you guys to create a vision board for yourself and your family. So there's, there's an online vision board that I used years ago and it just, I just made something like this. And I just took a minute this morning to Google some and there are at least three or more um, online vision board apps for free. And, and what I like about this is you can switch up the pictures anytime you want. So if you, you know, if your goals change, your vision changes, you can just go choose different pictures. And I want you to put this in a visible place where you can see it and imagine it and feel it. I have a book. This little book here. And this book has my brand partner's goals in it. Because if they ever want to give up, then I will say to them, Melanie, hope you don't mind me saying your name. <laughs> what about that $300,000 property with a, with a cottage on three and a half acres land in the country on the water? What about that? And I want, I want to say, what's it, what's it going to feel like when you are there, sitting on the dock with the sun on your face and the sound of the water coming up onto the shoreline? It will be incredible. You can do this. I also would like you guys to do a gratitude list or or Google a gra gratitude list. Pinterest also has them. I'll give you an example of one here. So here's one called 30 Days of Gratitude. Okay. And it says, so every day, so number one is, what smell are you grateful for today? Number two, day two is what technology are you grateful for? And then what color are you grateful for? What foods are you grateful for? So that you get the idea. So this is kind of fun because sometimes we just, we need these questions. We can't think of something offhand except for the obvious things. So that is a gratitude list. And here's the thing. You need to be grateful for what you already have in order to get and receive more. And the last thing I wanna share with you guys today is affirmations. Again, something else you can find online, on Pinterest, and there are apps too. So here's one that I had from years ago. My career is coming together. My purpose is becoming clearer and clearer. My circle's beautiful. My life is thriving. I am so grateful to be present and to be healthy. I am so grateful to have people rooting for me as I chase my dreams Life is amazing. I am choosing positivity. 
And if you guys ever want these exact ones, I can share them somewhere. Here's another cool one. You're worth it. You're smart enough. You have all the skills that you need. You're intuitive. You don't need permission. Don't ever forget that. And you can make it happen. And lastly, I did not write this, but I resonated with it. It was actually a leader from another company I was in. And I kept it all these years. I am leadership and making a difference. I have all the time that I need. I relate to everyone with good in intentions. I listen as if what others say will change my life. I have let go of my need to be right. I accept acknowledgement, but do not crave it. I attract personable, courageous, confident, energetic, humble, sincere, self-motivated, productive, and resilient leaders who are willing to learn into my business. I deal with my challenges, but never focus on them. Every day I create and play the game of life. I do not fear rejection and persevere with ease. I remain humble and allow myself to grow. I take 100% responsibility for what I do and do not have. I will talk about others as if they were listening. I attract leaders and have let go of my desire to rescue. What I think is what I get. I am a seven-figure seven income earner. Oops. So that's it, guys. I just want to say that on Wednesday, I will be sharing action tips on how to do this, how to build your business, so that you can have a profound impact on your life and the life of others and the lives of others. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And I hope that you found, you can find something helpful here. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Thank Julie. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hopping on. Thank you, it was awesome today. Thank you, sweetie, appreciate that. I just gotta figure out how to stop this recording. Bye everybody. Thank you so much, you're amazing. Thank you, honey.